Hey guys, be sure to check out the Mortar Pod, our weekly video podcast, and also check out the tutorial video for my board game, Travelers of Storia. Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here doing another Cons of Tarker Swiss Draft. Quick reminder to check out this week's episode of the Mortar Pod. Uh, the movie that we did is The Princess Bride. So check out the custom magic set for The Princess Bride. I individually go through every card that I made, which is about 15. So feel free to check that out. I was pretty happy with how the set turned out. Uh, on to this pack. I think we're just taking the Death Dealers. I haven't gotten a chance to play with this dude yet, but I've certainly played against it. And uh, I have a couple demon cats at home, too, so this card's perfect. Fits in with my lifestyle. Let's see here. My cats actually aren't demons. I take it back. I wouldn't want to hurt their feelings. Let's see here. Uh, Wind Scout, Scavenger, Nightblade, Incremental Growth, Aerostorm, Swift Spear, all sorts of good cards in here. Let's just take the rare, because I like that guy. He's very good. Hmm, well, I do like the Ascendancy, but it doesn't work so well with the Death Dealer. Uh, there's also Scavenger, which is good. Uh, of course, I have a love for the Hate Blade and Skull Hunter as per usual, but uh, I feel pretty comfortable taking a Sultai Scavenger here. I don't have a problem with that. This card's good, and uh, it's not too early, and we could still be Sultai, technically. So, uh, let's take that. I mean, I do like the Temer Ascendancy. I've played it, and I've liked it. Very good with the Alpine Grizzlies. I mean, it's not that out of the realm of reason. It would immediately... Put me in four colors and two cards, though, which I don't like. Uh, I mean, Skull Hunter is also an option. I think Scavenger's probably better. Especially, well, certainly better if I end up Sultai. But probably better just because it's a flyer. Uh, I think I'll take it. Let's take the Scavenger. I tend to pass this card later than I think I should. All right, Abzan Guide certainly seems reasonable here. Uh, Hooting Mandrills, another Delve guy. Um, yeah, I think we can take the Guide. I'm a big fan of that card. So that would move us more into Abzan territory, but I think that's okay. can always be four color if that pans out. So I guess because I have the Death Dealer... I'd presumably prefer to play uh, a black-green base for my creature, Splash White. Uh, ordinarily, I do the white-black, though, because you get that nice warrior foundation and then splash the green. But, uh, I mean, Death Dealer, you can still play him on the splash. He's just a lot more, uh, <clears throat> a lot more underwhelming, I would say, if you play him on the splash. Okay, here, uh, Disowned Ancestor is pretty playable. Dismal Backwater could help us future splash for blue, but I'm okay with taking the Ancestor. Longshot Squad's also a thing, but I like that the Ancestor's cheaper. It's kind of a nice roadblock. Um, so yeah, it would either be that or the Backwater. Backwater would allow me to branch into Sultai, which would be good for our Delve guy, but I, I have no problem getting an Ancestor here. And uh, we're not passing too much. Longshot Squad's playable, but... I feel like getting the low drops a little bit more difficult to do. Okay. Uh, here's another Sultai Fixer. But we could take the Throttle here because it's pretty good removal. Sidisi's Pet's playable. Smoke Teller's a fine two drop. As, but it's pretty much just a bear in this deck. I think we take Throttle pretty easily. Get a nice removal spell. Okay. Shamley Attendance is definitely a card. Uh, that's worthy of playing. It's also, I guess, Kintree Warden, but I don't like it all that much. And Swiftwater Cliff's not really the fixing this deck needs. I'm taking Attendance. We have two Delve cards, so I'd like some... Wow, that's a late debilitating injury. I'm going to slam dunk the injury, but uh, I was saying um, it'd be nice to get some Delve enablers. I guess debilitating injury kind of qualifies as one since you kill a creature most of the time with it. 
so this deck could use a bit of revelation, I would think. Uh, Rakshasa's secret doesn't seem out of the realm of reason either. All right, next. Uh, some decent blue cards. Scout the Borders actually seems pretty legitimate for this deck since we're presumably, at this point, I think we're just not Soul tie. I guess we can be, but I'd prefer, I guess, just try and make this Abzan guide work. We still could be Soul, soul tie, but I'm going to easily take the Scout the Borders here since it helps us quite a bit, not only uh, being our one mana fixer so far, but also it's nice for feeding your Delve. So it's a green way to feed Delve, and it seems like the right pickup there. Okay. Awaken the Bear. I'm a big fan. Uh, some of the drafters I watch don't take it as high as I do. Uh, I I don't know exactly why, but I'm a huge Awaken the Bear fan. I think this card is one of the more powerful tricks in the format. Since uh, if you're on the play with a Morph guy, I mean, what better card to hold up against your opposing Morph, you know? Basically, uh, kill their guy and deal damage to him. I, I love Awaken the Bear. It's a fantastic card. Jeez, Table of Temer Ascendancy. That's pretty surprising. Uh, so we could take the Sadisi's Pet. I think I actually like Witness more. I mean, Sadisi's Pet morphs cheaper, which is good, but this guy's pretty good for turning on Savage Punches and stuff like that, or any other Ferocious, since we're in green. Um, I mean, ascendancy. I I don't think there's. I I don't think it's realistic. We're not gonna make that work in this deck. Let's take a card we'll actually play. Okay, Karu Dreadmall. Uh, in general, not a huge fan. This doesn't exactly strike me as a deck that wants it either. But it is a nice sideboard option to have. It's also main deckable. Okay, we'll take another scout the borders. But I doubt I would ever play more than more than two. I don't think we need the banner, so I guess I'll take a race for sideboard. Kentry Warden is playable. I'll take it. I'm not really interested in playing it, but if I'm short on playables, I absolutely will. I think we're in great shape, though. We've got a nice-looking uh, Abzan build going on. I guess the Scout the Borders, two of them, is definitely a bit awkward, but... Um, let's see what else we got. Well, we've got another guide. Seems like a pretty easy pickup. We could take the Jungle Hollow for fixing, but um, we're pretty light. Um, I don't think we need fixing that bad for this deck yet. Couple excellent Mardu cards. Kill shots, good removal. Archer's pretty playable. I think it's a pretty easy Abzan guide. Huge fan of that card. Okay, another Scavenger is also Throttle. Jeez, Mardu Ascendancy. Card might be worth the splash. I would put me in four color, though, which is awkward. I think uh, my pick is probably the Alpine Grizzly, since we're short on creatures, and I love the Grizzly, especially with Awaken the Bear. But if we pick up the Grizzly, I'm really hoping to see a Savage Punch or two. That would be ideal. I, I mean, I also like Throttle and Sultai Scavenger, but... I kind of like focusing on uh, cheaper creatures for now, and Grizzly is just a great one. I've been a, I've been very much impressed with Alpine Grizzly and the way he plays. Uh, yep, yeah, I think after just saying it, I think we take another one. I could probably get away with playing Infinite Alpine Grizzlies. It's a lot of pressure. Trades up defensively all the time. It's just a great card. Secret and Despise are both playable in here because of our Delve, but uh, I'd rather have the Grizzly. A little more consistent pressure. Sideboard this. Guess we sort by cost again. All right, well, it seems like a good opportunity to pick up Incremental Growth. This is a fantastic card. Very super strong. Can you imagine doing that in some Alpine Grizzlies or even our Death Dealer or a Regener? Yeah, this feels like an awesome opportunity to pick up at Incremental Growth. Huge fan of this card. Very backbreaking in some board state situations. Well, we've got ourselves a Kintree Invocation. 
And uh, otherwise, it's a Scoured Barons, which I would like. But Kintree, let me see how good he is in here first. Amazing with the Ancestor. All right, that alone, kind of tempting me. I guess not that good with the Grizzlies, though. Fine with the Guides, good with Witness, good with Attendance. You know what? I'm going to take the Kintree here. Remember, we're base black-green, so white fixing, although very, very nice, is not a priority. Keep in, keep in close mind, we've got double scout the borders, and the two actual white cards we have in our deck are morph creatures, which means we could theoretically never hit a white source and still play these spells. Uh, Archer's Parapet would also be very good with the Kintree invocation, but I'm fine taking the invocation. Well, we can follow up with a Parapet, uh, which is still very good. Could also take the Scoured Barons here. This pack, I'm a little bit more tempted to take the Scoured Barons, but right after taking an Invocation, a Parapet would be very welcome. I'll take Parapet. I know this draft I seem to be prioritizing fixing very low, but I think I've had a pretty good explanation of why I'm doing that. I'll take the Grizzly over the two-drop Highland game. I think Grizzly's just better. All right, well, we get rewarded, because now I can take the Blossoming Sands over the Mandrills and not feel bad about it whatsoever. All right, Sagu Archer, totally playable. Happily picking it up here. This is a great-looking deck. I really like how this is coming together. Table to Scavenger. Happily picked that up. This is also sort of tempting me to want to play the two scout the borders. Long shot squad. Perfectly playable. First four drop. Just kind of surprising. Got some good morph action going. Actually we don't have much for morph. Is it only our absent? Oh and the witness, okay. Hmm. Alright, well we're up to twenty two cards. Uh great looking deck. I think, what's, what are we short on? We're short on, I guess, bomb. We, we don't have any real bombs in here. Abs and Guide are pretty much our top bombs. Uh, I, don't know, I doubt we'd need a third Scout the Borders. Yeah, let's just hate a uh, Valley Dasher, which can certainly be good. I guess we'll take the, another Kintry Warden, but I don't think we're playing that. don't think we're playing the Tusked Colossodon. Okay. So what do we want out of pack three? I guess one or two more fixers would be nice. Not necessary, but nice. Um, yeah, if I got two more white fixers, I, I don't even think I would have to run a planes, which is kind of kind of awesome. Another Temer Ascendancy, geez. Uh, I kind of tempted a first pick in Ancestor. Typically not that good, but considering we've got the old Death Dealer in here and a great mid to late game plan, I think that's fine. Watcher of the Roost. I mean, if I had actual more than two white spells in our deck to flip it, this is actually a very powerful card. It's just not that good in our deck. Yeah, I think it's pretty easy, Ancestor. Being able to go Ancestor, Kintree, Invocation is just going to be... just going to be bonkers. Um, what do we take here? Another Attendant seems pretty greedy. Could just take the Smoke Teller. It's a fine two-drop. We can be a little bit more beat down if I take it. Chief of the Scale, I mean, I, technically it's on color. It's just, I mean, these are warriors. I think my main issue with Chief of the Scale is I don't like splashing for it. I mean, there'd be much more of an argument for splashing it if it was the power, the one that boosted power, but I don't feel any real need to take a hard-to-cast spell when I can just take a bear, which is essentially going to do the same purpose I want it to do anyway. Is that a good enough explanation? I hope so. Uh, we're going to have to make cuts here soon, so i got to figure some stuff out. All right, I can take the Highland game. I think I actually am going to take Scoured Barons here because we were not short on playables at all. And even though I would like another two-drop, Highland game is not going to make or break this deck. Let's cut the Kintry Warden just because it's kind of a turd. Um, and I will have to make one more cut for this Scoured Baron, so probably... Hmm... I gotta tell you, I'm kind of tempted to do double scout the borders only because we have three delve guys, but I guess I could get away with probably cutting one. 
I mean, I don't have to play Smoke Teller either. Even though I just picked it up, it's just a bear. Let's take the Scoured Barons. Oh, wait. Did I not? I didn't have to cut anything, did I? Okay. Well, maybe we'll find an upgrade anyway. Jeez. As soon as I say that. Yeah, I'm going to take the Foil Rare over the Debilitating Injury. Despite Injury being an awesome pickup here, I think Ivory Tusk Fortress is better. Especially with in our deck with Incremental Growth, Longshot Squad, Double Ancestor. That is a lot of ways to get plus one, plus one counters on cards. Ivory Tusk Fortress is such a beast, too. I mean, it's actually an elephant, but you get what I'm saying. Swarm of Bloodflies is playable. Dragon Scale Boon is another trick. It's not bad. We're certainly good on the creature front, so I could see the argument for a Dragon Scale Boon. Um, then maybe, what, I cut one Scout the Borders for it? I also don't have to play Dragon Scale Boon. Swarm of Bloodflies is actually a decent card, too. Mostly because it flies. To be honest, I think most of the cards in here are pretty subpar. Not awful, but not necessary. Could also just cut the Witness of the Ages for like a swarm. but Or or maybe even the Sagu Archer. Maybe I'd rather main deck the Witness. So let's take the swarm and let's cut the Archer, I think. I think the swarm's a little bit more exciting. It also works well with the Fortress. Bitter Revelation seems excellent in this deck since we have three Delve guys, and I would prefer to play Bitter over Scout the Borders. It also fits our curve a little bit better. I would also like the Blossoming Sands, but I feel pretty comfortable taking a Bitter Revelation here. Feeding the, the Dat Delve. Yeah, let's cut one Scout the Borders. Let's take the Bitter. Just make sure we get one, which is nice. Temer Charger feels excellent here since... It's just a nice beater. Turn two. We got some really nice... Okay, actually, I have a really nice beatdown deck. What am I cutting, though? Maybe now I cut the Witness. I'd rather play a Temer Charger over the Witness. I can, Yeah, I can get behind that. Uh, here, I think I just hate a Ponyback Brigade, because I don't need any of this. And Ponyback is far and away, I think, the best card remaining in there. Dutiful Return, I'll take it for sideboard. I don't think it's likely we play it, but we'll bring it in that often. I guess if our opponent's removal dot deck, it's it's not bad. Here I'll hate a War Shrieker. The card's just good. Really shouldn't be that late. We already have an erase too for our sideboard, so. Uh so three white cards we're ending up with in this deck. Do I need a Sadisi's pet? Probably don't. I don't need any of these cards though, so I think we'll just take a pet. Just in case I need some more lifelink for some reason. Uh, very happy with this deck. Very, very happy with this deck. It looks nice. Not uh, not tough to play. Our white spells. We've got a nice black-green base. Uh, we have a couple ways to make our delve a little more streamlined into the deck. A little bit easier to play. We've got a nice early game and late game plan. Yeah, this is a very, very fine-looking deck. I doubt we'd need a second Dreadmaw, but nobody ever really plays Cancel, but let's, I guess let's make sure nobody plays Cancel. Cancel, I guess, I think th uh, the best argument I've heard for why it's not good in this format is um, you never know if you want to cancel your opponent's morph or not, you know? You're basically forced to counter a spell, and you don't even know what you're countering when it comes to morph, you know? Who wants to counter a spell if they don't even know what they're countering? All right, here we'll hate a two-drop. Less things for our opponents to do early. And we're actually keeping pretty busy early in the game. I think we are going to play 17 lands with this deck. So I could have had one more fixer. I forget what I took over. I think the Bitter Revelation. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not uh, I don't regret that decision. I like Bitter Revelation. It's good card advantage. Uh, we actually have Life Link in this deck, too, to offset the... Uh, life loss from that, yeah, but more importantly, making our three top-end Delve guys cheaper while simultaneously drawing us cards is very powerful, much more so than I think Scout the Borders. I mean, it is cool that Scout the Borders fills your graveyard for making these cheaper, but Bitter Revelation choosing two cards to fill your hand with is, in my mind, significantly better. It all I guess it's theoretically possible to miss on 
scout the borders, but I would be shocked if 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 I ever did. I don't even know if I have enough spells to actually miss on scout the borders. All right, let's separate stuff out. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. This is like a creature, so we'll still count that. Triple Alpine Grizzly. Here's our morph. Uh, removal, we've got Injury, Awaken the Bears, kind of removal, Throttle. So we're a little bit short on removal, no doubt. A little bit short. But uh, like I said, we have a great beatdown plan. Just a really nice streamlined beatdown plan with some nice uh, powerful effects in here as well. Good curve. Very nice. Okay. Let's, uh, I think we're ready. Yeah, let's just uh, get our mana base prepared and we're good to go. So we already have both a black and a green source that both are white sources. I only have one actual white spell. The other two definitely reward me for having white. Um, my deck's not very color intensive. The only multicolor spell is, or multi-color intensive spell is incremental growth, which seems like shouldn't be too difficult to play. You're playing it pretty late game anyway. Uh, I need both green and black early though, so. What do they suggest? They say two planes. They want me to have four white sources, and then I would have seven black and eight green sources. I gotta be honest, I'm a little more tempted to have eight, eight, three. I don't know if that's exactly right, but because I actually have green uh, spells, green and black colored mana symbol spells, I think I'd rather just run three sources and call it a deck. Um, like I said, for the final time, Abzan Guide can just be a Grey Ogre in this deck if we never see a white source. And then it becomes an awesome creature when we do eventually find our white source. Uh, Ivory Tusk Fortress is just super bomb, so certainly worthy of running three white sources for. Yeah, very powerful looking deck. I think it's... Uh, yeah. Just very powerful looking. Looks like it applies a lot of pressure fast and uh, has a great late game plan as well. So I'm excited to run it. We shall see you guys round one.